Hi everyone, Joey Reese here with the Practice Center, uh, stopping in for another little bit of a chit chat. And today I want to talk to you about my friend who is probably about eight inches shorter than I am and petite. And she drives a car that's similar. So the car is petite and it's cute. And sometimes I need to get in there and drive it, say if it's a night out and it's my turn to be a designated driver. So I get in the car and I can't even get in because the seat is crammed way up like this and all of the things are right here. So if at that moment when I was starting to get in, I was like, mm, your car doesn't work for me and got out, I think we could all say that that was silly, right? And you would tell me what to do. What would you tell me to do? Tell me to adjust the seat adjust the mirrors, adjust the knob, adjust the setting, adjust the things, adjust it so that it can be drivable for me. Somebody who's a completely different size. Duh. Like there's evidence of this kind of stuff all over the place, all over the place. I mean, I don't sit there and look at somebody modeling clothes and go, mm, that won't work for me. Well, there are certain things that I do that. I'm like that that'll never go over one leg no matter what the size but mostly we know that we need to adjust or customize for us when we hear messages around mindfulness and forgiveness or attitudinal healing or any kind of healing work somebody will uh, listen to a particular workshop or a particular topic in a particular workshop or some sort of modality of how they deliver that particular thing or the research that's coming from. And they'll look at that thing in general and I'll get, mm, that won't work for me. And I find that to be so, so odd, not just in the helping field, but we do that across all things. We'll look at it, take a cursory note and say, that doesn't work for me. And my question is how, how the hell would you know? Like you haven't even sat in it and adjusted the seats and see how far the mirrors adjust and see what the knobs are doing and see what the ergonomics of the arms and stuff are. You haven't even gotten in and began the adjustment process. How the heck would you know? So mindfulness is one of these things that I hear that about all the time. So mindfulness, um, the way that we're talking about it here is about the process of practicing and cultivating our ability to be mindful, which is present and in the moment, no matter what, without judgment, right? So for that definition, we practice cultivating that through mindful meditation, perhaps, both formal and informal practices. But immediately there's like a whole, probably upwards of 50, 60, 70% of people I've ever talked to about mindfulness. At some point in the conversation, they'll tell me, well, they can't quite do it because they're fill in the blank for some, for whatever reason, this big wide old thing called mindfulness, they can't do it. It's like looking at that car and going, mm, that car is not for me. You might not like it. You might not like the color. You might not like the fact that it's a manual car and you prefer, you know, automatic. It, it, there might be preference issues. Does not mean that it won't work for you. Yeah. So with mindfulness, I love the Zen saying, the ancient wise Zen saying that says, uh, we all need to meditate and work towards 20 minutes a day. Unless you're busy, then you work towards an hour. I love that statement because it speaks to the nature of our busy, busy mind. All of our minds are busy. Like you're not any more unique than the next person or you're just as unique as the next person <laughs> in that we all got busy, busy minds. Sometimes when I'm uh, speaking with friends um, or my kids, I've, I've had the comment, they're like, does your brain ever stop? Like, does it ever stop? And I'm like, no, it never stops. I have so, so many thoughts that I interact with in any given day. Constantly thinking, not only about myself, but about the events and things that I want to plan and how I want to adjust this and how I'm going to fix that. Like I'm constantly all over the place, which is why I practice mindfulness. When I don't, all of those ideas swirl around me and pull me, you know, like the clouds. The, I mean, not the clouds, the wind in the storm, like, you know, outside, it's just swirling. 
So it's like at any one time, I'm like caught up in this part of the wind and I'm swirling over here and I get jammed over to this side. And what mindfulness does for me is it allows me to go, yeah, 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 there's a storm with a billion bazillion thoughts. But there's also a center where there's calm. There's center where there's sunshine. There's a center where it feels like stillness. And when I can touch that, if from that position, I can see my thoughts and then go, I, I want to play with this one for a while. And then I get sucked into the wind. And then I have to come back and practice again, either by practicing being mindful or actually sit my ass down and practice mindful, or practice a mindfulness technique so that I can cultivate my ability to be more mindful at the time. So sometimes, if, especially if it's a topic I don't like. So uh, running your own business, there's a lot of admin stuff. I'm terrible at it. I, even the language that I use, I'm working on that. It's like, mm, it's not my favorite, but I'm working to get better. Whatever. I don't like it. And so sometimes when I go, okay, today's the day I'm going to get focused on it. So many things can so quickly pull me. Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's a phone call on days when I would never, ever answer a phone call. But on the day that I'm working on admin stuff, if the phone rings, I'm, you better believe I'm going to answer it. So that's me being pulled, right? Pulled into that. So the fact that I am such a monkey brain, monkey mind, <laughs> A stormy, stormy, stormy hurricane is why mindfulness works for me. It's simple, but it's not easy. When I sit, even in my sitting, there's a lot of thoughts that I am constantly, ah, there's a thought. I don't chase it. There's another thought. I don't chase it. And there's a, it's a constant. It's constant. Yeah. Definitely better now than say five years ago, 10 years ago, for sure. For sure. But I, as far as I know, I'm still human. And so this is part of the condition. And this is one of the tools that helps me stay centered so that I can pick a topic and stay focused longer or feel more calm while I'm focused. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't feel like such an uphill battle. Yeah. So this idea of it doesn't work for me, challenge that, be curious, be open. Is there something that you can adjust? Is there another word that you can use? Can you practice it differently? Can you practice it with somebody or pra practice it alone? Like look at the way that you're approaching this thing that everybody has said is really good for us or, or a lot of people for the most of us, for a lot of us. And if you, there's a part of you that says, hmm, maybe, then that means there's a little bit of willingness in you. So then be willing and curious to see what you might need to adjust in order to allow it to serve you well. Same way that I wouldn't drive my friends, you know, with my knees up here and my, like, I wouldn't drive like that, right? So I have to adjust in a way that allows me to drive a little bit more naturally. And this is how I drive. <laughs> yeah. And so I can adjust the seats to do that. And then it becomes more me. So that's our, the, the message for today. So practice looking at whatever you might say, mm, that doesn't work for me and go instead, hmm, is there something that I can adjust and allow it to serve me a little bit better? Okay, see you guys later.